you know, Terrence McKenna talks about this time where apparently there were these mushroom cult, matriarchal mushroom <laughs> cultures that were just <laughs> slurping back yeah. mushrooms and having these wild orgies, these wild primordial orgies. Yeah. And um, uh, you talk about that. You call, What do you call that? A something horde? What's it called? A primal horde. A primal horde. This yeah. idea of, of just a tribal group that's mating and fighting and living together as this kind of undulating <laughs> organism way back, way back in the wind. But, yeah. and so something happened, something happened right somewhere along the line. Something happened where the parents came home and they're like, you guys can't have this kind of party. <laughs> Agriculture happened. Agriculture. Yeah. That's what happened. That's what fucked it all up. And, and in the book, we sort of do a, you know, a reframing of the story of the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, the original right. sin, the fall and all that, where the way we read that myth, the Garden of Eden was the pre-agricultural world, right? That was a world in which people were not ashamed of their nudity. Right? Yes. Of their nakedness. That's right. Yeah. It, so that suggests that there was a sexual innocence and freedom. Yes. Right. Uh, it was a world in which everything was provided. The gods or, you know, as the, you know, hunter gatherers tend to be animus. Right. There was yes. there's no one God and certainly not a jealous God. Right. But, you know, even the Christian view of that pre-fall period is very much like the hunter gatherer reality. Right. Everything's there. And if you look at the psychology of hunter-gatherers, which is pretty um, stable, like uh, not stable, but uh, universal, like it's something you find a lot of commonality uh, among different hunter-gatherers from different parts of the world. It's um, th they look at the world as a really safe place, a place that provides, a place wow. where there's plenty. It's not a scarcity-based worldview, right. which is what we've had since agriculture, right? Where if it's a zero-sum scarcity-based, there's not enough for everyone. You got to fight to get yours. I'm sorry. When you say zero-sum, what do you mean by that? Okay, zero-sum is like is like if you and I have to share a beer, as opposed uh, to there's plenty of beer. I got so you. the more beer you drink, the less I'm going to get. I got you. So there's zero. At the end, there's zero. Yeah. Right. So you get more, I get less. Got it. In the hunter-gatherer world, that's not the way it works. Right. That's the way it works in an agricultural world where you've got a harvest and that harvest has to last till the next harvest, which is a year later, generally. So you got to get through the winter. Right. And so we're going to split up this harvest and there ain't going to be enough. So, you know, you got to struggle to get higher on the hierarchy. You got to protect what's yours. You know what I mean? Right. So that's the world we live in. And we sort of assume that that's the way it's always been. So you've got this sort of Hobbesian worldview of prehistory that, yeah. uh, you know, before the state, life was solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Awful. Bullshit, 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 all down the road. They're all wrong, right? Yeah. But that's because we're projecting the modern sense of what life is into prehistory where there weren't things like supermarkets and so on. So we say, oh, everyone was starving because there were no supermarkets in prehistory. Completely scientifically ridiculous. Right. But it's a natural way to look at things. But the, 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 the lifespan back there, wasn't the lifespan much shorter uh, no. during that? No. See, that, that's one of the, the fallacies that the idea, and, and everybody thinks this. I've taught in medical schools. All my medical students thought this. Doctors I've consulted with think this. Let me, let me tell you my idea of it, yeah. because, um, and, then, and then please shoot it down. <laughs> um, because No, because I've got some joke where I actually talk about how miserable. Well, actually, no, I don't go all the way back then to the glorious primal past, but here's my idea of the primal past, right. primordial past. I am fucking hungry, man, and, and I need to eat something. There's nothing to eat, so... Now I'm with a group of people who are all kind of hungry and we've all got to go hunting to find something to eat. And we hope that we don't wander into someone else's territory who's also hunting for something to eat. So during this time of hunting for something to eat, I end up stubbing my toe on a stump. The toe gets infected. I don't have penicillin. So now I've got an infected, swollen toe. I'm sloughing through the forest behind the tribe trying to find something to eat, desperately hungry. I'm sick, I'm malnourished, I haven't ever had vitamins. And then uh, because I'm slumping and dragging my foot <laughs> behind everybody, a leopard jumps out, devours me. Everyone laughs. Ah, he was the weak, weak part of the tribe. Stumpy. And that stumpy's <laughs> gone, thank goodness. <laughs> so that's my idea of the primordial past. 
Yeah, yeah, it sucks, huh? Yeah, that yeah, sucks. Yeah, so and much, Hobbs, so much Hobbs better yet. to be living in you know twenty first century L A. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's well, uh, I'll, let's go down that that vision. Okay? okay. First of all, you're you're desperately hungry. Yes. Uh, turns out that hunter gatherers spend far less time working than we do. Now, maybe not you and I personally. Right. Uh, I assume you're a slacker. I'm kind of a slacker. How dare you? <laughs> but, uh, you know, far, far fewer hours than your average, you know, working yeah. guy 40 hours a week. Um, the, and the work they're doing is, is enjoyable. They're hanging out with friends. You know, uh, the women are, you know, wandering, picking berries and digging up tubers and roots and things. The men are off hunting together or apart, whatever. Um, when you look at, uh, there are all sorts of economic uh, studies of hunter gatherers and, you know, in terms of, uh, hours per week spent, uh, you know, gaining food and doing this and doing that. Yes. Turns out they have, they work f far less than we do and their work is enjoyable. Is there a number? How many hours a week? It, well, that's why I'm not putting numbers because it depends. There are different studies of different groups, right? But like the, the Kalahari, uh, San, the Kung San, they're yeah. called that exclamation point at the beginning. Uh, I believe I, Richard, uh, I can't remember, the, he's a Harvard uh, anthropologist. Um, I think he, it was like 16 hours a week, something like that. And and this is in the Kalahari Desert, okay? Right. So imagine people who are living in the San Francisco Bay Area, you yes. know, or, or, you know, some lush, yeah, New York, whatever, place where there's lots of... I, I talk about in the book, we talk about a study that I was, mean, pre New York. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. The area, you know, yeah. that's now New York. Yeah. yeah I mean, there, um, we talk about a study of, uh, that some anthropologists did in Utah where they gathered, uh, crickets, which were one of the things that the local Indians there ate a lot. And they gathered crickets and they wanted to see like, in terms of nutritional content and caloric value and all that. And I think it was like in an hour, they had gathered the nutritional equivalent, you know, on the good side of vitamins and minerals and so on, of like, you know, it's like 20 Big Macs and, you know, per person or something. It was, in Jesus. other words, our sense of prehistory as being a place of desperate struggle for survival is wrong. 